Hello and welcome to Not Your Cousin's Oil Change. The Not Your Family's Workshop Series is brought to you by AmeriCorps and the Cincinnati Public Allies. To learn more, visit nyfworkshops.com slash about. Today's video will help you gain a basic understanding of what an oil change entails and important considerations for doing one at home. So what is an oil change? The traditional internal combustion engine found in most cars is made up of many moving parts, and those parts need to be properly lubricated in order to avoid damage. Oil in the engine provides that function. Over time, that oil breaks down and becomes contaminated with dust, dirt, and debris from the engine as well as the environment. When that happens, the oil can't properly do its job and it needs to be changed. Proactively changing a vehicle's oil and filter will help the engine continue to work at its best and prevent costly repairs to drivers down the road. How often should you do an oil change? The short answer is that it depends on the car model, how old it is, and your personal driving conditions. Conservative estimates for oil change intervals used to be as low as 3,000 miles, but that was before significant improvements in fuel delivery systems, engine materials, manufacturing methods, and oil chemistry. Today, modern engines can normally stretch intervals to 7,500 or even more than 10,000 miles. So what's the right answer? In most cases, you should stick to your vehicle's manufacturer recommended oil change interval, which you can find in your owner's manual or online. For example, my 2016 Hyundai Sonata Hybrid is recommended to have an oil change every 7,500 miles, assuming I'm driving in normal conditions. If I were typically driving in severe conditions, it would need to be changed every 3,750 miles. Severe conditions can include making frequent short trips of five miles or less, making frequent short trips of 10 miles or less in freezing temperatures, stop and go driving in extreme hot weather, driving at low speeds for long distances, lots of miles on dusty, muddy, salty, sandy, or gravel roads, long distance trailer towing, and track driving. So how do you know what oil is best to use? This again will depend on the vehicle. There are two main categories of oil, synthetic and conventional. Both synthetic and traditional motor oil are made from refining oil. Most synthetics begin with highly refined crude oil pumped from deep underground. That's the same source as conventional oil. Other synthetic oils use artificially made compounds or a synthetic oil as a base oil. The primary difference between synthetic oil and traditional oil is at the level of refinement or grade. All grades of oil are manufactured with additives that increase performance. Synthetic oil is often more expensive but offers some technological advantages. You experience fewer vehicle emissions and better fuel economy and oil economy. You have increased engine protection and wear from lower friction. You can go a longer time between oil changes. You have reduced engine drag from greater resistance to thickening. The oil effectiveness and quality is more predictable and uniform. The oil has better all-weather protection for your engine. You can experience quicker engine start times, and it helps clean engine sludge and deposits. In general, if you can afford it, go for full synthetic or at least synthetic blend because it has the potential to make your car run better and save you money in the long run. To find the exact oil viscosity or resistance to flow that your car requires, check your owner's manual. My car takes synthetic oil at a viscosity of SAE 5W20. So if there are shops that do oil changes, why should I bother learning how to do an oil change on my own? While taking your car to a shop for an oil change might sound convenient, there are a number of benefits to doing it yourself. First, you can save money. Shops will charge you for the oil and filter going into your vehicle and the labor of the person changing it. When you do the service yourself, you only pay for the supplies. At shops, they're likely also going to tell you about other things they can do. They might convince you to replace your cap and air filter, headlights, wiper blades, or more. Many of these replacements are simple and also cost much less to do on your own. 
At an oil change shop, you will also get a sticker on your windshield reminding you to come back at a certain mileage for your next oil change. More often than not, these stickers select 3,000 miles for your next visit. As we learned before, that's not always necessary and could result in a waste of money. Second, knowing how to do your own oil change means you can do it on your schedule. No more trying to find when a shop is open or taking off work to make an appointment work. Finally, doing your own maintenance helps you know your car better. Knowing more about your vehicle means you can recognize when something is wrong earlier and potentially avoid costly repairs. And you control the quality of work on your car. Many mechanics are fantastic at their jobs, but you can never be too careful with your vehicle. It's best to control the quality for something that you've made a huge investment on. Now that we've gone over some background on oil changes, we're going to watch our friends Nick and Nick show us how to complete one at home. Hi, I'm Nick, and this is also Nick, and we're going to show you how to change oil in an oil filter today. So the first thing, some of the things you're going to need is a jack, which you can also use the jack supplied in your car, in most cars, a funnel, a drain pan, a wrench, a uh, oil filter wrench, oil in an oil filter. Uh, for this car it's 17 millimeter, but it can also be 15 millimeter, 13 millimeter, and... It can be all different kinds yeah, of sizes, it, you, you never know. It can be any size, you're just going to have to play around with it and see which one fits. Um, <laughs> so, when you're trying to change your oil, the first thing you want to do is pop the hood which there should be a lever down by your parking brake. Once you pop the hood, you want to look for a lever down here because your hood won't come up all the way. And then you're going to look for your prop. There should be a hole inside that it lines up with to keep the hood up. Once you have it up, you want to look for the cap for your oil. And it will, most cars will say what oil your car takes. This one takes 5W20. Um, you can also go to your local auto store and tell them this is the car I have and they'll tell you which oil you need. So here's the dipstick and you can also pull that out and then also take the cap off so you don't forget to put oil back in it once you drain it. All right. So. If the last time you changed your oil or had it changed and there wasn't a sticker put inside your car, you can check your oil, pull a dipstick out, wipe it off, put it back in, bring it back out, and then normally there's a full and a low tab, and your oil needs to be somewhere in between. On this car, it's below the low line and it needs to be changed out and refilled. So before you do your oil change, you want to lift the car up and you want to find a solid lifting point to put the jack. And you want to get it as close to the front of the car as possible. And once you find that spot, you can go ahead and lift it up. up pretty high because you gotta get your whole body in there. Now before you get under the car you just want to kind of shake the car a little bit make sure it's not going to go anywhere and you're all set. Okay so once you're under your car you're going to want to locate the drain plug which is usually directly under your engine and like I said earlier it will either be a 17 millimeter 15 or 11 or pretty much any size now when you're taking this off you're going to want to be careful because oil is going to start to come out as you're loosening it one tip is you probably want your engine to be cold because if it is hot the oil is also going to be very hot when you try to drain it and then just let it all drain out it'll take a minute or two all right 
So once your oil gets to a slow drip or stops dripping, put the drain plug back in. And tighten it back up. Alright. While you're under the car, the next thing you want to look for is your oil filter. Most cars don't have a casing like this car does. They're just out in the open. But for this one, it is covered up inside of here. This is the old oil filter. Can you hand me the new one? So once you got that out, there's a gasket. A little rubber O-ring. That you're going to want to remove. Your new oil filter will come with new gaskets and an O-ring. And you're just going to want it slide it back on. Make sure it's in place all the way around or you will have an oil leak. Tighten your oil filter back on. When putting it on, you don't have to wrench it on. You can just put it on hand tight and that will hold. All right. Now that you've got your oil filter and drain plug back on, you can go ahead and lower the car. Just want to lower it nice and slow. All right, and then you can go ahead and pull the jack. Now, on any five quart uh, jug that you buy of oil, has measurements on the side. And typically you want to pour in about four quarts in before you top it off. Now before you start the car, you always want to put your oil filter cap back on. If not, oil is going to spray everywhere. If you want to go ahead and start the car. You want to let it sit and run for about 30 seconds. Now you always want to use a clean rag when you're checking your oil. Don't want to put any loose contaminants inside the engine. You want to always wipe the dipstick clean the first time. Just stick it back down in there all the way. Might take a couple times. So it's right there, and the full line is right there on the dipstick, so we know we need to fill it up a little bit more. I'd say it needs at least another half quart.
right there at the top. And you're good to go. So what do you do with the old oil once you've changed it? Do not pour it down a drain or throw it away. Because it's an environmental hazard, you must take it somewhere to be recycled. It's actually illegal for you to dispose of it improperly. Many local auto stores and shops will accept oil to be recycled. To find a location near you, use earth911.com to search for recyclers. It's important to note that some vendors charge a few dollars for recycling. This fee is also charged when you have your oil changed at a shop. We hope this video was informative and helpful. Please make sure to complete an evaluation survey at nyfworkshops.com evaluation. These evaluations will help us determine if this video series should continue and how we can improve the content of future workshops. Participants who complete at least three different video evaluations by May 22nd, 2020 will be entered to win a raffle for a $25 gift card. Thanks for watching our video. If you're looking to learn more life skills, check out the rest of our videos. And please send any questions to nyfworkshops at gmail.com. Special thanks to the following individuals and organizations for providing the information and resources to make this video possible.